I met Burton Cummings in Winnipeg about 10 years ago when he was playing with a little rock and roll group for, I don't know, maybe a dollar a night. And I knew at that time I could sense that he had the kind of, it's an overworked word these days, charisma, that possibly would make him into a, a rock and roll star. Well, he played around Winnipeg with the Guess Who for four, five, six years, and they never looked like they were going to make it, but they held together and they finally did. They've got a number of million sellers under their belt. Uh, I suppose they're the most popular rock and roll group in Canada. I think they're the third most popular rock and roll group in North America, according to Billboard magazine. Uh, Burton still lives in Winnipeg. He is, by most standards, fabulously wealthy. He's 24 years old, and he's a good fellow. I used to have a lot of fun with him in the University of Manitoba Lounge, uh, having our little rock and roll history contests. A terrific guy, and here he is. I interviewed him when he was in Toronto last week. Now, I can remember your, uh, you playing in a number of assorted groups, not the Guess Who, back in the uh, old days, which was, what, 10, 10 years ago? Yeah, 10, uh, 11. I actually started with the Devrons when I was 13, so that makes it 11 years ago. Yeah, for what, $10 a night? or The first, the first money gig we ever had was, was for $5, which uh, there were five, five guys in the band that made a dollar each, and we were all too young to be driving. We were too young to get driver's licenses, so we had to take cabs with the equipment. So it ended up um, costing each guy about $3 that night to play. Yeah. Because we made a dollar each and the cabs were about four. You've got to be irresponsible to get into the music business, right? <laughs> you, you can't all really your be too, too security-minded, I'll tell you that. Because uh, it, the future is very uncertain. Uh, for Well, just about for any performer before you get to some ridiculous level where there are hundreds of thousands of dollars pouring in every month, then it doesn't matter. Did that happen in a flash? I know the Guess Who's been together for a long, long time, and you've been with them for how long now? Uh, almost seven years. Yeah. Well, it, and you worked with the Guess Who. I can remember in Winnipeg four years ago, and uh, you were just doing that uh, local, uh, not that local, you are doing a television show at Winnipeg, a national afternoon yeah. TV we had show. Yeah, it was two years with CBC yeah. we had. I think we did about 80 shows altogether. Yeah, and then did it just happen in a flash that you started making instead of uh, Absolutely. $1,000 so, or maybe $500 a week, ten, you know, 10000 a week? It, it really, really came fast. Once these eyes broke in the States, the next thing I knew we were uh, whisked from Regina on a Friday night down to Pittsburgh and Cleveland and Florida and Philadelphia and New York and then they were sending us to Europe and it, it just all really happened quickly. You wa always want to be a pop star? Yeah, I really did. I wanted to, when I was really young, well I guess 10 or 11, I used to stand in front of the mirror and, and mime Conway Twitty and Bobby Rydell tunes and things like that. I used to think to myself, that's a pretty decent way to make a living. These guys must, you know, it can't be all that bad. And I used to say, well, it's too bad I don't live in L.A. or New York or someplace like that because out of Winnipeg, I know I haven't got a hope in hell. Well, why didn't you leave? I really don't know. I don't know. We had one very good rock station, CKY, and that, that was enough to keep in touch with the rock world in some places as, as vague as Winnipeg, you know. And uh, we, just, we just stayed. Now, now I would never leave. Now that I've been all over the world, I would never leave because it's, it's really it's a great place to live. It really is anywhere in Canada compared to anywhere else. This is like, you know, euphoria here. It's just crazy. Utopia. What am Utopia. I saying? It's too early in the morning. <laughs> it's it, Utopia where? In yeah, Winnipeg? Here in Canada, really, I think anyway, compared to some of the places I've been. Uh, it's nice to go to Europe and Hawaii and Mexico and South Africa and South America and all these places, but it's really, I would much rather live here than anywhere else. Have you got a good business head? Or don't, or don't you have to worry about I don't that? have to worry about that. I have people that do all that for me. I, we have a shopping center and a bunch of things here and there, chicken stores and gas stations, and I don't give a damn about it, you know. When I need money, it's there. Simple do as Do you that. have to ask? No. I just kind of blink the right eye about four <laughs> times, and they give me a blank check. It just We just go down to the office. We have an accounting firm, and about, there are about three chartered accountants that handle nothing but our business. Because it really does, the, the, the money really pours in in ridiculous amounts, like royalties and things like that. And God, God knows where I'd start trying to manage it, you know, so they do it for us.
Did good management make you a star? <sighs> Or did sure, you make it? Sure did help. I would say a little bit of both, because we did write some fairly commercial tunes. And we were really gearing ourselves. Randy Backman and I really, really geared those tunes for the market. You know, we, I don't write like that anymore. Okay, I'm, give me an example of a of a tune, let's say, that you wrote and you geared yourself strictly for the commercial. Laughing. Market. Laughing. After These Eyes was never meant as a single, and that was a huge record. It sold about a million and a quarter. But laughing RCA from New York phoned us and said, all right, these eyes just certified. You're the first Canadian band ever that had an American million seller that cracked the top five, blah, blah, blah. BMI Toronto was doing handstands. They couldn't believe what we had done. And uh, RCA New York phoned and said, please, if you fellas would be so kind, we would like another one of these, maybe establish you uh, and prove that you're not just a passing fancy, like a flash in the pen. So write us something in the same vein. And we, we didn't like being told what to write, you know. We were getting a little huffy now that we had a bit of success under our belt. And we sat down, we wrote Laughing in about 10 minutes. They released it about three weeks later after we recorded it, and, and it sold a million as well. Do you deserve the money you make? Damn rights, every cent. Because... Can anyone legitimately earn, this is what I want to get into, can a anyone legitimately earn, this has always been a, I've, I've asked this of other uh, uh, people who make uh, tons of money, can anyone, does anyone legitimately earn to, uh, can, can they legitimately earn in a year, let's say $500,000, can, is the actual toil, the work involved, worth it? You know? Sure, because um, it's not, it's not just physical toil, it's mental, you know, the strain and duress so to speak it's it's really um we're playing in the big leagues now and the pressure is is part of the reason i think we earn every cent we make well, what kind of pressure is there well the pressure of wondering where the tunes are going to come from for one thing uh if if rca is screaming for another album and we don't have anything and then the, you figure well should i really sit down and slam out a few tunes or am i going to come up with something or what if they don't like the next album, the direction that the band is heading, you know, are our things going to be as good next year as they are this year? Uh, money problems are all out of the way. Now it's more, now it's more artistic, you know, and we're, we're kind of getting to the point where we're more or less recording and writing for ourselves. And it's a big transition because we're not gearing anything for any specific market anymore. I don't know how much of a marketable, a marketable commodity we're going to be in another two or three years, but we are satisfying our own musical tastes. And, and you know, we're setting fairly high standards for ourselves. Whether or not the people will pick up on that is, is another mm -hmm. thing again. The pressure of going from Las Vegas, where it's 110, up to Toronto, where it's 20 below, let's say. And you play one gig in Vegas on Thursday night and the next gig in Toronto on Friday, and your throat goes <laughs> like that. or coming from Florida back up to Boston, let's say, in the winter, or just things like that. You know, uh, planes flying every single day. We fly more than most stewardesses, you know. Uh, Do you fly, fly first could, class, by the oh, way? Oh, definitely. I wouldn't go back in the cattle car ever again. I've been spoiled, and I'll admit it. Uh, well, we're in the air so much, you know, that we may as well make it as comfortable as we can. It's very simple. Would you give up your life? Would you like to be like you were before your success? No. No, because now I can determine exactly how I want to live anyhow. Because of my position and because of what I've seen. I've got a little bit of experience mm -hmm. as far as traveling around and comparing things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can pretty well determine my own, you know, my own lifestyle. I just bought a new house in Winnipeg, which is just flipping me out. How you many? Know? You said 27 rooms? Yeah, it's a 27 room house. It's fairly big. Well, um, there's just you, though. There's me and, and uh, a very good friend of mine. Well, well, my best friend, he'll be living there too. But we may never see each other, you know. You could live in there for six months and never run into each other. What do you spend your money on? You don't seem to spend too much on clothes. You got the, uh, no. the Levi outfit. Yeah, I've sp this is this year's outfit. <laughs> uh, I, haven't, I haven't really spent a cent until I bought this house. I hadn't spent any money at all. You know, I've been living in a little $10,000 house. Uh, I did the first thing I did when I got money. I went down and I bought an XKE two plus two out of the showroom. And that was my one little trip at the beginning. I always wanted a Jaguar, and I got these royalty checks started coming in, so I just went down and bought one. 
And I got rid of that about a year ago because it was too cold for Winnipeg. I haven't really spent my money yeah. on anything. I spend a lot of money on records. I go to New York and I go hunting to the, and they have the most amazing record stores. And I'll come out maybe with 150, 200 albums and have them all shipped home. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. that's the extent of it, really. What we eat well and and we drink good Order. liquor, you know. And it's just little things, though. You know, you're you're asking how do I spend my money, like real money spending. I don't know. Yeah, this this know. house is the first thing. No major expenditures, eh? No, not yet. Uh, I have taken a few trips here and there. I went all over Europe in February, just on a whim. I was in New York, and all I had was my briefcase, and there was an Air France jet leaving for Paris, and I had nothing to do for six weeks. Happened to have a bunch of traveler's checks, and I had had my vaccination six months earlier, so I figured, well, Paris sounds pretty good. Just walked over and bought a ticket and went.